the first company I did with some friends was actually this one called uh, Human Ingenuity, and we were just selling computer systems and components. Um, and that one was more just, uh, we wanted to do a company, and we, we thought that, was, that made sense, because for where we were, you could just literally place, take the orders and drive down to San Jose, buy the parts, and then come back. Um, it wasn't good business, it didn't go anywhere. But you know, there's four of us, we all left school after our sophomore year, and just tried it out. We, you know, we're selling it and building stuff in our own apartment. Um, we managed to sell like two computer labs worth of uh, equipment to, to Berkeley for the mechanical engineering department. Um, and uh, I think we were just impatient. We just felt like school is so slow and we wanted to just get out and we couldn't wait to like leave to go do our own thing, you know. And then out of the four of us, three of us continued to do other startups and one person went back to school. Um, so, yeah, after we left, so I did two years, and then it took me another ten years to finish, like, the remaining two years worth of classes. Um, basically, I was running the business, and I was trying to take classes on the side. Either if it was during the semester, I'd take, like, probably about two classes. I would go to work, or i try to cram the classes so it's, like, all Tuesday, Thursday, or all Monday, Wednesday, Friday, like, if possible. And then I would drive in, take the classes, go back to work, and then at night I would, you know, do my homework or whatever. Um, and a lot of times I'd also do it in the summer because summer classes work really well because it's so condensed to like eight weeks or whatever it is. Um, so it's a, it works a lot better for your schedule. Um, and then when we got to a point where we were selling Rotten Tomatoes, um, I knew I wanted to move to Asia just to see what it was like over there. And uh, I was like, if I, you know, moved to Asia, I don't know if I'm coming back. So then I had like three or four more classes went in, finished those for one semester. That's like all I did, and then graduated and moved to Asia. Um, I actually started EECS, which is Electrical Engineering and Computer Science. Switched to Computer Science, switched to uh, Business, and then my parents were actually like, don't do business, it's a major about nothing. And so um, I ended up at CogSci. And CogSci, um, partly because it already could use a lot of the classes I took, to, like kind of fit that major. Um, also, my dad had been doing some stuff with artificial intelligence, and cognitive science is kind of one branch of it, kind of goes into artificial intelligence. Um, so he's like, oh yeah, that looks cool. Um, but it's a study of like how people learn, like how kids can develop, you know, pick up a language, etc. Um, but I have not really used it at all. Yeah, but I think it's good. I mean, college is also more just um, to to learn to you know, be on your own. And um, from an entrepreneurial standpoint, like what I tell people is it's the single best place to find a co-founder. You know, and you look at like tons of these big companies like Facebook, Google, Yahoo, PayPal, whatever, it's usually like buddies from school. You know, I when we raised money for Rotten Tomatoes, it was in um, January two thousand. The market crashed in March two thousand, like crashed badly like people think 2008 was bad like 2000 was ridiculous bad like everything was going under we had identified like over 100 competitors like that were in entertainment video you know reviews etc and it went down to like less than 10 within like a year or two like everyone went out of business um and so back then you were just doing whatever you could to survive you're bootstrapping we were i was sleeping under my desk for like six months um and when we did it, I think a lot of it was just, you know, trying to do something with friends uh, and doing something that we thought was cool. Like we, a lot of us like movies or entertainment and we just said, hey, this is kind of a cool site. Um, we sold it in 2004. This is like when things were getting better, but Google had not gone public yet. So the market was recovering, but not like as huge as it is now. And then I went to Asia for like nine years then came back a year ago. And after I got back, my observation is the Bay Area, it's like, it's like Hollywood now. Um, it's like, you know in Hollywood how they say like every waiter is like trying to be an actor or a director or they have a script in their back pocket. Like that's the Bay Area now except with startups. Like everyone is like in a startup, thinking about quitting their job to join a startup, has a startup idea or, or ideas. And so you're getting a lot of people who back in the old days they would just go and be a doctor or a lawyer or a manager consultant or finance or something now they're all going to do startups instead and some of these people probably should stay and do what they should have normally done you know um and the other thing i feel uh is people now are much much more focused on the numbers like they uh they're always talking about 
term sheets and valuations and stock options and I feel like they're just too much focus on the money a little bit and it's like they want to be Zuckerberg because they want to be a billionaire not because they want to make something like a Facebook and I, at least in our the old days I feel like people were focused more on making a product like making something cool um, and I guess the analogy I would make back to Hollywood is you know if you got some people who are like all they want to be is famous not to make a good movie or not to make you know something cool I think for entrepreneurs, the biggest thing is, you know, if they're serious about trying to do something, um, you know, make sure, like, pick something that they like, that they have a passion for, um, that they, where they're actually um, trying to make something that they believe in. Uh, and then the other thing is just start early, you know, ideally, like, right out of school. Um, you know, look for their co-founders while they're in school. Uh, and then just, just do it. Um, I, I see a lot of people who come up to me and they're like, hey, can you introduce me to VCs or angels or whatever? And they're like at maybe a prototype stage or an idea stage. And I'm like, no, just go out and do it. Like, and show if you can actually develop a product that gets any kind of you know, traction like traffic or revenue. And then it's going to be much easier for you to go and raise money. Um, because a lot of these guys, like, if they went out and tried to pitch a VC, it's like they're way too early and they would get no's from like 99.9% .9 of those people. And if they, after enough no's, usually people are just going to lose their passion for it and they're just going to be like, oh, forget it, it's not going to work. When actually they should just take their passion, work on the product and make it work or, or not work. We had a nice office space that, because we had a design firm before Rotten Tomatoes, um, we had like 20 something people, um, you know, got a Class A building, et cetera, in Emeryville, right next to the water. Um, but then after we decided to do Rotten Tomatoes, we passed the design firm off to another group. Um, we raised a million from like angels, but uh, when the market crashed and we had like 20 something people, we just knew like there's no way we were gonna survive. So we had to cut down to 14, then 11, then finally the seven. And um, we tried to do it in a nice way. We basically told everyone like, hey, we have to like cut our headcount, but we you know, accelerate everyone's vesting so everyone got equity, um, even if they were let go. And we told them like, hey, go find a job first. And we essentially employed people until they got a job. So no one had a, a gap. Um, uh, but then, yeah, so even when we were at seven, we still weren't break even, like we were still actually burning money. Um, so everyone had to take a pay cut and it was optional like how much you wanted to and we would replace it with equity um, and so everyone took at least a 30% cut and then me and one other guy took a hundred percent and when I looked at my finances I was like well the biggest like fixed expense was you know rent and so I just like got rid of my apartment moved everything in because we had so much space you know I just took three cubes and like hid like my clothes and stuff into the drawers and uh, and just had like a foldable kind of bed thing and then you know in the day you're working and then at night you just like roll it out and just go to sleep um, and even if like the you know the security people come through and they like look in and sometimes you're there you just be like oh I'm, I'm pulling all nighter or whatever which is you know you're just, you work late and you get into the office really early you know and no one can tell I would say uh, one thing I realized was I used to say that you you can never fail until you give up you know so as long as you keep at it like um, eventually hopefully it will succeed uh, and that was kind of true for some of the early ventures I did but then um, I was doing some stuff in Asia and I would say those didn't go so well and it got to a point where I'm like I don't know if, even if I put more time and money into it if it's really going to change it um, so the thing I realize now is it's like the analogy I like to make is it's like poker it's skill and luck it's not just one or the other like some people have a great company think it was all skill and it's like no a lot of it was luck you know um, because you look at these companies that are very similar to each other, you know, within search engines or social networks, and like one will like run away with it, but a lot of times they're not the first. They just happen to be the right timing or like something different, you know. And and then there might be other ones that are very similar to them that just didn't make it for some reason. Um, so I would say that was the biggest thing I realized, and I realized like if you, you know, play. I'm not a professional poker player or anything, but you know, there's certain theories that they have, and a lot. One of it is like you kind of wait until you get a good hand. You know, so um, the equivalent with startups would be like, try out a lot of different ideas, like test it, you know, put it out there quickly, see what happens. And you can't always predict what's gonna be big. Like a lot of these companies that are huge now, the guys who made it had no idea it's gonna be like that. I, you know, Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, whatever. They just made something, they put it out there and just, whoa, it just got big. And then they, then they kind of went with it, you know? And then the skill kind of comes into play is um, if it's going well, you know, sometimes, 
people will still screw it up. You know, they'll sell too early, they'll raise from the wrong investors, they'll um, hire the wrong people, etc. So it still takes a lot of skill to actually get it to the size it got. But you know, you look at companies like even like a Facebook or Google. You know, I think Google was trying. I heard they were trying to sell to Excite for like less than a million dollars when they first started. They're like, just take us, you know. And Excite didn't do it, and now their Google is bigger than Excite ever was, you know. But what if Excite bought it? Like there would be no Google. Or even Facebook was almost sold to Yahoo, you know, for a billion, and now they're like far more valuable than them. So. Um, I think that's the biggest thing I realized. It's both, and not to like, if you're an entrepreneur and things are going bad, even though you're working really hard, sometimes it's not your fault. I mean, sometimes it's just wrong timing, wrong whatever, you know. Um, I think that's probably my biggest like lesson, and I've only learned that like fairly recently. Well, the thing was when during the recession and after the market crashed, um, it actually wasn't that bad because uh, we were running Rotten Tomatoes at the time. We could see like traffic and revenue. It was, we never had the hockey stick ever, but we just had like just a steady growth. And every month or every quarter you look at it, you'd be like, okay, our traffic's bigger, our revenue's bigger. And, um, and we eventually got our, you know, well, after all the cutting, we eventually got to a point where we break even and we could just keep growing and growing and growing. Um, and when, it's, when the site or your company is constantly kind of growing, uh, it fixes everything else, you know? So I wouldn't say that part was actually that bad or even that hard. Um, it's, it's harder is when it's like when you're doing something and it's flat or it's every month it's kind of decreasing. That is really tough. And especially if you're the one running it, um, you have to keep everyone else's morale up when, when the metrics of the company is naturally going to push everyone down. And so you're like this battery and you're charging everyone, but then how do you stay charged? That's, that's really tough. Yeah. So generally, you see people and they're talking about culture and all that, and I'm like, that's important. Yeah. I mean, definitely have a good culture, have good benefits, et cetera, et cetera. But end of the day, the most important thing is just grow. Like, if you're growing, it will solve like everything. Yeah. If you grow too fast, sometimes they end up suing each other, like a uh, Snapchat or Facebook or weird things. But that's like a w rare case, I think. Yeah. Uh, one of the guys I did my first company with, this guy uh, Lyle Fong, he he ended up doing a company called Lithium Technologies. They're like a social software for communities, an enterprise company. Um, they're doing really well. They've raised like 150 million in venture financing, doing like 100 million revenue a year. Uh, and they bought this company called Clout like a couple of weeks ago, which is like a social reputation kind of company. And they're going to hopefully try an IPO next year. Um, so he and I did our first company. Uh, um, even our second company, we were neighbors. Um, and then when we were doing Rotten Tomatoes and, and he was doing Lithium and the market had crashed, they actually were subleasing space from us for three years. So we were like in the same office space. And then I went to Asia, came back, he was still running Lithium. I mean, they've been doing it for like 12 years or something like that. And we were hanging out a lot. And I think he was getting a little bit maybe bored. And so we were like, hey, maybe we should do something together. And at first he was like, um, tell me about some new enterprise idea. And I said, hey, that's really boring. Like, I, I don't like enterprise. I think it's because it's all sales. Um, so I said, well, why don't you take a break, which he ended up doing. And then I either, then either do something for fun. And I specifically said, like, make a movie, write a book, or make a game. Or do something, like, out there, like a moonshot, like a SpaceX or Tesla. You know, and then a couple weeks later, he came back and he's like, let's make a game. And actually, almost everyone that we started the company with were people. We, he did, like, a little dinner gathering at his house. And almost all the people that are doing it are the people who are at that dinner. Um, so I was like, you know, I was like, are you serious? And he's like, yeah. And like, okay, sounds good. So we're doing one now. It's called Hobo Labs, and um, we thought it was a funny name because when we were traveling, like, both of us weren't working and just kind of traveling around. And he would always say, hey, we're like kind of like hobos and stuff. Although he traveled very lavishly, so I'm like, I don't think this is like that. Um, and uh, yeah, we started about a m month or two ago. Um, we raised some money from some, some uh, VCs and uh, angels. Um, and we're trying to make mobile games, like looking at uh, free-to-play model, casual. But really, our thought is like focusing on the social aspects. Um, like how do you make games where people are actively playing with their friends and trying to get their friends to also play more? Yeah, so that's kind of what we're trying now. And we've never made a game, so we'll see what happens.